Hi folks, welcome to my video about the Rockless QRP uh, 40 meter transceiver. September or November 2009 QST featured on the cover. No rockbound, no more. Uh, Bob Patslaff from Hinsdale, Illinois took the ever-popular Rockmite uh, crystal-controlled QRP transceiver and designed a uh, VFO whereby you could change frequency uh, and not use crystals anymore. And he gave it a, a maximum of about 100 kilohertz spread. So in 2009, and after reading the article, I contacted Bob via email and purchased uh, one of his kits. And uh, the kit came in two sizes, uh, the Altoid size with a single turn tuning pot, which you needed to use a smaller span to really make it useful. Or you could use the uh, larger size kit, which came in this enclosure, and um, he included a 10 turn potentiometer in order to uh, give a wider, uh, better band spread if you wanted to use the 100 kilohertz spread. The kit consists of all the parts needed, two very small silk screened etched circuit boards and a whole pile of tiny tiny little parts. Now one of the helpful things you need especially if you're elderly like me and your vision is not as good as it was is a magnifier lamp and for those really tiny ceramic uh, capacitors, you need a 10 times jeweler's loop. And um, suggest if you're going to build this kit, or if you're going to obtain your own parts, however you do it, uh, double check everything. Check all the resistances with your uh, VTVM or <laughs> the uh, digital multimeter. And then um, you need to uh, obtain your own enamel covered wire 22 gauge to wind the toroid, which I just bought a toroid uh, for a dollar thirty nine or a dollar ninety nine that was pre wound with the right size, looked like the right size wire, unwound it and used the wire off of that which I ended up with a lot of extra so um, the uh, instructions come uh, you have to print them out I believe I printed them out it's helpful to have a access to the uh, binaries uh, archive on the ARRL website to print out the actual article which let me see here is here instead if you don't have the magazine and um, it's pretty good description block diagrams and so forth you need you basically need all of the uh, information you can find on Bob's website and some of it is a little hard to dig out it seems like um, there's various updates and changes and diagrams to show you wire uh, jumpers that need to be put in hints on building check out some of the other people that have built it that are listed on his website they've got some tips and hints uh, more circuit board assembly hints corrections and um, 
I had to dig out everything that I could to uh, to get this put together properly. It's very tiny stuff and hard to, and you have to be able to read a schematic uh, to really successfully put this together. I took the schematic that was in his um, kit documentation and I blew it up for the VFO portion. This half. As you assemble, check everything off. Double check that you got the parts in the right place. Also, check all your parts against the parts list. I had some discrepancies there. Um, some board layouts here, parts layouts, and then copy this schematic and then use it to check off as you go. Those are my tips. Um, I tried to contact Bob. Let's see, today is uh, second week of, uh, what is it? Let me look at the thing here. Okay, February 7th and <clears throat> a couple weeks ago or a week ago I, uh, so I didn't start assembling this kit <laughs> until this year, a few weeks ago, and uh, it turns out that the uh, inductor, the 8.2 microhenry inductor on this uh, VFO board turns out to be one of the ones that causes frequency instability. I guess it eventually after 15 minutes or 10 minutes it settles down but he recommended on his uh, website uh, two different substitutes that somehow this one got substituted along the way and included in the kits and I contact, tried to contact Bob to uh, to get a replacement and there was no response from his email, so the last thing posted on that website is, uh, I believe, from last year sometime, and when he discontinued selling the kits, and it said to stand by for updates, so I don't know if there's uh, health issues with Bob or what, I haven't really heard uh, any contact from him, so... I went ahead and ordered the uh, from DigiKey the uh, inductor part number that he suggested, and I ordered for 78 cents a piece. You know, in case you <laughs> goof one up in your assembly, or you need a spare, or it's a bad one, or whatever, and you can order. You know, there's no minimum order from DigiKey, and uh, the shipping was. Two dollars and fifty cents, I think, U.S. postage uh, first class. So, got it in a few days. So now, what I'm going to have to do is remove this part and put the other one in. Uh, there are ways around if you don't have some of the equipment that he recommends or some others recommend to do your. Uh, alignment and tune up and everything. There are other ways you can come up with to do it. I I uh, don't have a digital readout on my ham rig so uh, to set the 700 hertz offset I'm going to use a 700 hertz tone uh, and compare and you know, match the audio pitch so that I can set my offset. I decided to use a bud box and uh, it's bud part CU473 uh, the old good old standby bud corporation still making uh, enclosures this one measures um, oh, 4 and 5 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths does have a little taper on the side. So you gotta make all your holes. Uh, I'm gonna use binding posts back here on the rear end, key jack, and BNC connector, which BNC connector is not included in the 
parts. Um, I went with a BNC. Uh, he had a RCA phone plug for your, evidently for the antenna connection. I decided I wanted to go with a BNC connector. Uh, in the front, uh, we're going to have uh, the volume and the push button for setting your uh, key speed and offset and keying speed and this will be the uh, the headphone jack and the 10 turn pot comes through here and what I've done is with the 10 turn pot I obtained a miniature you'd find these on test equipment like um, uh, oscilloscopes and so forth it's a actually it's like a 15 turn turn counter with a quarter inch shaft and that is going to go on there so I can actually write down a chart as to frequency and count it out instead of just shooting in the dark so uh, a little pan of ice is handy to have for your um, holding your circuit board the mag magnifying light and um, I'm using some standoffs. Uh, it's recommended that you bond all the grounds to the chassis of the enclosure. And uh, so I'm using, uh, instead of the, uh, well, I did use one of his 440 screws that he, uh, machine screws that he enclosed, but uh, in the other ones I'm using 632s and nuts that I drilled out as a spacer some washers to get them and uh, that way they're stood off the bottom so they don't short out and you have uh, good uh, grounding and bonding for the grounds which helps to eliminate any frequency instability and chirps according to one of the others who have assembled this kit. Uh, it's not a Heath kit so don't expect step-by-step -step, uh, instructions to check off you have to do it by reading all of this, the ifs, ands, and don'ts, and checking it off for yourself on a schematic, being able to read and figure out where they go on the board, and taking it off the paper. Uh, they are marked on the board. There are mistakes here and there that have to be um, accounted for by reading all this literature. And um, then I'm going to use this with the BLT Plus antenna tuner which I still have to assemble. This one is all pre-punched and much fewer parts and uh, pretty much of a straightforward assembly so it should be a lot easier. To, uh, just take your time on this Rockless QRP and uh, I'll have to see exactly I'll probably do a follow-up and see when I get it all operating do a demonstration of it. So that's basically it.